Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for joining us. Maverick City and Kirk Franklin continue to make headlines with their BET performance, with Kirk Franklin calling the group the next generation of gospel music. That's a high honor. And from superhero to Grammy award-winning singer, actor Zachary Levi is now trying his skills at writing. Here's Ephraim Graham from Studio 5 with more of the latest in entertainment. At number five. It's Kirk Franklin and Maverick City Music's performance at this year's BET Awards. And the winner is... Woo! Little Baby and Kirk Franklin! And this moment. So many black churches died in ignorance because the pastor would not step down and pass the baton. So tonight, because I've been blessed, I want to be a blessing to the next generation. Maverick City deserves this baton. This award, I want to grace it to Maverick City, the next generation of gospel music. Give it up for them right now. At number four. Brother once told me, when things are too dangerous to say, sing. Elvis enters the summer box office at number one this weekend with more than $31 million, beating Top Gun Maverick, which did 29.6. The way you sing is God-given, so there can't be nothing wrong with it. At number three. Well, good morning to you from K-Hug. I'm not doing internet or social media. I'm a dinosaur and proud of it. Full House's Uncle Joey now plays a DJ at a Christian radio station in the new Pure Flick streaming comedy, Live and Local. Saddle up, partner. We got a show to do, eh? <laughs> we got Tommy and Tina with you live and local. Tommy, what about your new diet, huh? I'm, I'm fine. So there's a, a new series out called Live and Local. Yes. And I understand a certain <laughs> singer is making an appearance. What can you tell us? <laughs> Man, um, I'll be honest. I didn't fully understand what this was. Um, I just saw that Uncle Joey was a uh, was playing this character. It's about this Christian radio station, you know, and all of, like the things that go on behind the scenes that maybe the world would never see or hear. Um, which I think is brilliant because I have seen and heard some of those behind the scenes moments and they're hilarious. Um, but they they brought on some real guests like myself, honored to be one of those guests, um, to talk about life like they would in real life. So to me, it was actually like a real interview. It was like you and I talking, you know, um, but it was just Uncle Joey, which is kind of awesome. Yeah, and you are stylish. I'm, my hair looks up to your hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At number two, we head to Lancaster, Pennsylvania to Sight and Sound Theater for a major announcement. And now we're turning the page on the next chapter of the Sight and Sound story. It's time to pick up the camera again. Lights, camera, action. Hello and welcome to the headquarters of Sight and Sound Films. This newly renovated state-of-the-art studio is where films will be written and produced. It even includes our very own 20 acre backlot for film production right next to our theater here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. At number one. Shazam! From superhero. I don't know where we go from here. I don't know what comes next, but this. We did this. To Super Bowl champion. Zachary Levi sits down to chat about his latest role, author. I was running from pain my whole life. I was running from pain. Opening up about his struggles, mental health, and his faith in his new book, Radical Love, Learning to Accept Yourself and Others. How does it feel sitting here now knowing I think at one point I'm reading that you felt you lost God and he was gone? Oh, man. Uh, I was driving around in Austin recently, driving up this road that was kind of near the house that I was staying in when I was having this breakdown in this Chilantro restaurant where I was having this breakdown and um, and I was driving by it and, it and it just all flooded back. I was like, oh wow. Like I, I remember being right here and thinking there is no hope. 
And there's no way I'm moving beyond this. There's no way I'm going to live beyond this month. And, and, and I was very much alive and I was very much living my dreams as I was now driving by the same road. And I was so grateful. Oh man, so grateful that I didn't do something so stupid and so drastic. And that I get to sit here and talk about this book that hopefully, hopefully, if nothing else helps, at least one person walk through the flames that I, that I was able to get through. Wow, that's powerful. All right. Well, Ephraim, welcome back to the show. We got to talk about actor and singer. Uh, Zachary Levi is coming out with a new book. It's called Radical Love. Tell us more about that. I didn't even know he was a Christian. Yes, indeed he is. Radical Love just released yesterday. We got to sit down with him over the weekend. Uh, an emotional interview. We're actually sharing more of it on the 700 Club on Friday. Uh, you don't want to miss it. But he shares um, the fact that he was suicidal more than once. He actually left Hollywood because he felt it was toxic, but then he had grown up in a toxic home. Um, mom was abusive uh, and an addict. Uh, dad was absent. A stepfather who um, wasn't the, the best example. Uh, he and his sisters did survive, but literally his sister helped to save his life, get him into therapy. There he reconnected with God uh, and reignited his faith. Uh, and he felt he wanted to share this story because mental health is so important. He says something in the book, and even to me, he goes, you know, if someone tells you that they've got cancer, you don't look at them funny. You say you need to get help. But when people uh, have mental health issues, they don't want to talk about it. You don't want to get help. And it's really important that you do that. Uh, so his sister found the, the treatment center for him. He was there in Connecticut. And he says after he did the work, that's when his greatest role came to him. It was literally, he said, as if God says, OK, you've done the work and you realize this. Now I can bless you. And that's when Shazam came. And right now, that is the biggest role he's had to date and, of course, Everyone loved the film, and he says, literally, just as I was coming out of therapy, that's when the call came, and he knew that was God. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. I love that he's sharing this with everyone. Yeah, it's yeah. a great story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, look forward to the interview on Friday. Yeah. Thank you. Well, the theater group Sight and Sound, uh, they're now venturing into film. They're getting out of the theater uh, <laughs> and into bigger theaters, I guess. Indeed, tell us more. Indeed. They said that they realized during the pandemic when things were shut down, I mean, that sort of stopped them being able to deliver their entertainment to people. They ended up developing a streaming platform, and now they're going into film. But the, the history of Sight and Sound Theater is it actually began with the grandfather who's still around, picking up a camera and taking pictures and creating a slideshow for his church. That's how it all started. So Grandpa is actually glad to see they're picking up the camera again and now going into films. The first one will come out for Christmas. They're going to focus on people who were changed by Christ and then helped to change the world. So every story will have a connection going back to what they like to do most, talk about Jesus. Well, don't wow. ever despise the days of small beginnings from <laughs> yes. a slideshow <laughs> yes. to these uh, spectaculars and, and now into yeah. movies. That's a, it's a wonderful story. Indeed. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we got to talk about Full House. So mm -hmm. Full House's <laughs> Uncle Joey yes. is now starring in a new show. Tell us more about it. It is called Live and Local. And the premise is this, going behind the scenes of a Christian radio station. The nice twist, as you heard from Colton Dixon, is... The people that they interview are actually real Christian artists who come on the show, so we get to see behind the scenes. This will premiere on the streaming platform Pure Flix next week, and there will be a new one every Thursday following that. There are six episodes. Colton Dixon is featured in one. Uh, we'll be talking to Uncle Joey in the very near future. He wants to talk about his recovery from addiction uh, as well and naturally. Okay, so he comes out of addiction and is able to do a series like this for us to enjoy. That's really a creative concept. Mm -hmm. And I also get like the office vibes. <laughs> yes, I don't know, I, that's the, exactly, way, you got the it. way the camera like would you zoom got in, it. zoom out really quick. <laughs> you nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But a Christian version. <laughs> you got it, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to talk about Elvis. Elvis didn't uh, yes. ever seem to go go away. And I know <laughs> Ashley wants to see the I film. I really want to see the film. I'm actually very shocked that it actually outnumbered Top Gun. Indeed, indeed. They said early on they had to wait, and finally the numbers are completely in, and it got more than $30 million in opening 
weekend. When this premiered at the Sundance Film Festival, it got a standing ovation for quite a long time. Elvis' family, there, his daughter, his wife, uh, there at that premiere. Of course, Tom Hanks is in it. Austin Butler plays Elvis. I am actually making time to see it myself this weekend. I was not able to preview it um, because I do want to see the story and it's gotten such rave reviews. I mean, just that side-by-side -side picture, picture of Austin Butler and the actual Elvis is incredible. Yeah. Like, he looks so much like him. <laughs> you got it. I mean, you obviously not identical, but something about the eyes and the nose, it's just... That's that's kind of weird. But. And as we shared, shared here before, he was handpicked by Denzel Washington for the role. Wow, that's mm -hmm. amazing. Yes. Very cool. <laughs> all right. Very cool. Well, Efren, thank you for being with us. Mm -hmm. For all the latest in entertainment news, check out Efren's weekly show. It's called Studio 5. You can watch it on the CBN News Channel or online at cbnnews.com slash studio 5. Ash? Long hours and lots of booze. Rob and Diane's successful career came with a heavy price. They knew they needed to make a major change, so they opened DV8 Restaurant. Now they're helping others overcome addiction. Pretty much our first 10 years of marriage was all about his job and acquiring things and moving up the corporate ladder. As successful restaurateurs, Rob and Diane Perez were living the American dream. The couple both professed faith in Christ as young people, but the restaurant business came with a lot of stress, long hours, and alcohol use. It's part of the restaurant culture. Our first dating, everything, revolved a lot around drinking and partying, pretty much. Eventually, Rob's drinking spiraled out of control. I was becoming more and more reckless with how I drove, chances I would take, people I would spend time with. I went through recovery when I was 25, and Diane helped me all the way through it. I grew to know God and be more in a personal relationship with Christ. And that's such a big tenet of a 12-step program that really has been a vital component of my recovery. The couple moved to Kentucky in 2003 and opened up several Saul Good restaurants, but the work was still taking a toll. We had gone through so many things in our marriage and just with moving and, and acquiring stuff and his jobs that I we were pretty done, or I was done doing that whole thing. And when our daughter was born, I, we wanted to get her baptized, and we went to a church here. The very first Sunday we went, we, I'm not kidding, it, it was amazing. And, but I didn't want to say anything like that was really cool, like he was talking to me. And then Rob said to me, clearly we've moved to Kentucky for that church. In 2014, Diane visited a women's safe house in Cincinnati that opened her eyes to the needs of those struggling with addiction. God said to me, y you and Rob could do this in Lexington. Like we could open something for the people in the community. And so I came home and I was super excited and told him, I'm like, we, we need to do this because we have so many people that we've lost to addiction. Diane got the idea of opening a restaurant that would hire men and women in recovery. They named it DV8 Kitchen. Two of the many lives that Rob and Diane have touched include Jessica and Jared. My drug of choice became heroin. I lost my family, pretty much. My dad wouldn't look at me anymore. My mom, she just cried all the time. It was like breaking her heart every day. And I was stealing from them. After Jessica entered a treatment program, she heard about DV8 Kitchen and their Second Chance program. Coming here to work, it was all about the community and, and running a good restaurant, having responsibilities and taking care of the responsibilities. I didn't really have any standards, and I didn't know what standards were. Like, I didn't know how to hold standards for myself because I felt like I was nothing. I was addicted to meth and uh, began smoking it regularly. By the time I was 17, I was looking at a prison sentence, and I was really lost until I got uh, a second chance to my second chance and started working at Deviate. But I had behavioral issues here at work. I wasn't getting along with people very well, especially Rob. And he really challenged me to, his exact words were that I needed a bigger shovel. I needed to dig deeper. So I ended up getting into long-term treatment. The whole point is to show society that even though we screwed up and even though we made really terrible decisions and we hurt people, that given the right opportunity and the willingness to take that opportunity and run with it, um, we can actually be very productive, healthy members and contributing members of society. Rob and Diane work with local AA and celebrate recovery programs. Rob even conducts workshops with local businessmen. 
to educate and encourage them on the importance of hiring those in recovery. What we're trying to do is convince every business in America to hire one person in recovery and learn the terminology. And how are people gonna get to reach their full potential if no one will give them a chance unless it's a lower paying job? What about the middle paying jobs? What about the high paying jobs? Because there's people that are in recovery all over. Rob and Diane say they have finally found their purpose in learning to serve their community and employees, literally. Our life has been radically changed, transformed. I mean, we're different people for sure. I had no idea that Diane's suggestion to try to help people would change the way I think about work. And because we try to apply being good at your job, but trying to help people along the way before you help yourself, and try to bring our faith to work at the same time, it's really changed the way I feel about my job. I'm basically a glorified busboy. And frankly, we don't make much money but I can tell you that it's the best job I've ever had. I'm more fulfilled, I love it, and it's wonderful. It's so much better to give than to receive, and I'll tell you, helping others and making a difference in your local community really feels great, and I love what they're doing. They're giving people a second chance, because how many chances has God given us? Endless amounts, so I love, love, love what they're doing. Gordon. Linda Nolan is an energetic, fun-loving grandmother. Not long ago, she suffered from a lingering sinus infection and night sweats. After three months, she was completely drained. Then, while watching one of her favorite TV shows, Linda was healed in an instant. In um, May 2018, I started experiencing symptoms of sinus infection. And what I noticed was um, congestion and pressure in my sinus up here and down in here and having a stuffy nose at night, um, not being able to breathe freely at night, which I usually am able to do that. And, and then um, some the soreness here in my throat. And I just, you know, I just didn't feel good. A sinus infection drains you so much of, of energy and you feel just kind of like a, like a rag doll. I used saline rinses, and I try to do the natural way of, of handling uh, sicknesses. So a lot of vitamin C, and I was expecting it just to, to clear up. Um, after three weeks of dealing with the sinus infection, it got a lot worse. I was experiencing night sweats at times, but they were increasing. By the fourth week, they were happening every night. I told my friend that between this bad sinus infection and the night sweats, it was wearing me out. It, I, it was wearing me out. At lunchtime, I made my lunch and sat down at the kitchen table and turned on the 700 Club. And um, it came to the point in the program when Pat and Terry join hands in, in, in faith and pray. The Lord, you know, He's so present when he, they do that every time. And, you know, I've been watching this program for years. I think it might have been the very first thing Pat spoke of. He said, there are many of you or some of you who, um, you have an infection and night sweats. There's somebody, you've got an infection, you've got night sweats. You, you, it, it has just left you terribly debilitated. Right now, God is healing you, giving you strength, and all that viral uh, infection is going away and leaving your body. My mouth fell open. Father, you, you have healing for me. And thank you, you know, thank you, Father. <laughs> I just put my hands up in the air and just, just worshiped. Pat spoke almost word for word what I had spoken to my friend that, that morning. It touched me deeply in my heart. Um, God's love and care for me right away. I didn't have that sick, um, achy feeling when you have an infection in your head. Well, that night I did not have any night sweats at all. I didn't sweat at all. When I woke up the next morning, my sinuses, they were completely clear. I had energy. I had those wonderful grandchildren. I loved doing things with them, running, um, painting, doing crafts together. And I could do that um, like I wanted to. You know what it is? It's the faithfulness of God. 
He had compassion for me, what, what I was going through with that. And so he did something about it. God has compassion for you. Get that. Understand that. His mercy is new every morning. His compassion, they, it fails not. He always wants to save. He always wants to heal. He always wants to deliver. He loves you tenderly. He loves you so much, he was willing to give himself for you. Isn't that amazing? It's the best news anyone's ever heard. The creator of the whole universe cares for me. He numbers the hairs on my head. He, he wants me to have good things. He wants to satisfy my heart's desire. He's created good works for me to walk into. He did that before he even laid the foundation of the world. world. These are incredible things. And in that incredible thing, whatever your need is, you can go to him and say, Daddy, I need this. I, I need help with this. I can't do this on my own. Can you help me? And whether that's a sinus infection or it's cancer, he listens, he hears. And if we know he hears us, then we know that we have the answer to whatever we're asking. These are the words of the Apostle John. He lived those words. He experienced miracles. You can experience a miracle. Just have faith in God. Have faith in his compassion. Have faith in his love towards you. Have faith in his ability. Have faith in him. When you have that, you get the answer to your prayer. Now, we've got some other testimonies for you. They're here to encourage your faith. Here's Ralph. He wrote on two, YouTube and said, my twin boys were detained from the hospital because of my wife and, uh, and, and my drug use. The Lord did a powerful miracle, delivered us from addiction. We turned our lives to Jesus Christ and within record time got our boys back. I give him all the glory because he was with us every step of the way. Amen. Well, here's another one from June on YouTube. And she said, my son was suicidal and on drugs. He seemed like a hopeless case, but Jesus set him totally free. This June, it has been three years and he is on fire for Jesus. Only God could change my son's heart and heal his mind completely. Praise Jesus. Amen. Well, let's pray. Join with us in prayer and just put your request before the Lord. Be very simple with it. Be very childlike with it. Understand that he sees you. He wants to forgive anything you've ever done right. He wants to do that and he wants to heal you. Let's pray. Lord, we lift everyone in the audience to you. We declare over them the wonderful words of Psalm 103, that you forgive all our iniquities and you heal all our diseases. So we come to you as little children and we thank you. We thank you for what you have done for us and what you're about to do for us. Send deliverance now. Send forth your word to heal our disease. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Ashley, God's given you some. Yeah, I believe somebody is watching, <clears throat> excuse me, the ring finger and the middle finger on your left hand, those two fingers are broken. And you've just been in a lot of pain because of that. You've been asking God to, to just drastically and rapidly heal that for you. And I believe God is doing that. He's answering your prayer. He's heard your prayer. He loves you. He sees you. Just receive this in Jesus' name. Now, there's someone you, you're having trouble swallowing. It's almost like your esophagus is, is in a continual spasm. And, you, and it feels like there's something stuck in, in, your, in your throat all the time. And, and it's actually in, in the... The, the middle of your chest. God's healing you of that. He's, he's restoring your esophagus. He's restoring a uh, complete ability to swallow anything. In Jesus' name, be healed, be set free from that. Somebody else there, uh, you actually have like a numbness and almost like a drooping. Uh, I think you've almost got like paralyzation on the right side of your face, specifically around your lip and chin area. God is touching you right now. Just receive his healing hand upon this. You will not have that any longer in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. And if you want to 
give good report of what God has, has done, give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word from Psalms. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. God bless. We'll see you again. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.